and Air Force Times. Good morning. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call the International Space Station for a voice check. Station, this is the Air Force Times. How do you hear me? We read you loud and clear. How do you hear us? Great. This question is for 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 all the uh, all the astronauts. Um, I wonder if you could tell me how your experience as Air Force and Navy pilots prepared you for this mission. Well, uh, this is Terry Verts, and I'm an Air Force pilot by background, and that was probably the most important training and formation and foundation that I had to be an astronaut. Uh, there's something about my experience as being a pilot that. It uh, helps the way you think. You think in an operational manner. You learn how to prioritize what's important and what's not and do things in, a, uh, in the appropriate order when, when there's something that comes up out of the ordinary. And it also helps you to communicate when you don't have a long time and you have to get your point across quickly and clearly. And so being a, being a pilot is probably the most important training. It's for sure the most important training that I've had and that we still do as astronauts. And all the astronauts have aviation training of some kind or other, even if they weren't military pilots. It's what we do in the astronaut office. And did you, if you want an answer from all of us, I'll let Samantha and Butcher both uh, Air, For Air Force and Navy pilots also. So I'll let Samantha add to that. Great, thank you. Yeah, I would say a, a number of things uh, from my um, pilot training and background helped me. Um, for sure, the, um, the habit of dealing with complex machines and complex operational environments um, helps you a lot to, you know, when you're flying to space and you're doing just that, you know, you're part of a team, um, everybody counts on you doing exactly what you were trained for at the right moment, following the procedures, uh, taking the right decisions at the right time, and that's exactly what we train for as, as uh, military pilots. Um, and then just uh, there's a general aspect, I think, aspect of, of military life that I think, I think teaches you uh, perseverance, uh, teamwork, um, you know, putting the, the, the goals of the team ahead of your personal goals, um, self-discipline, um, all that, that kind of stuff I think helps you a lot in the astronaut job as well. Well, going third, I don't have much to add to that. I, I'd say I'd echo everything they said, but as a naval aviator, same thing. Certainly, I think the one thing maybe they didn't mention that I would add is uh, you're put in stressful situations when you're in training. Um, you know, flying a, a jet aircraft may be not uh, so terribly uh, difficult, but when you start employing all the capabilities of that airframe and leading multiple airplanes uh, in uh, combat scenarios, uh, that's very challenging, can be very stressful, and dealing with all those things, multitasking is certainly something that helps you uh, for this job right here, without a question. Wonderful. Um, and when is your next spacewalk, and how do you prepare for it? Yeah, that's a great question, because that's what uh, Butch and I are in the middle of doing right now, is preparing for it. Most recently, I just um, took the spacesuits and got them resized so that they, they fit me. Uh, every spacesuit has different adjustments you can make on the arms and legs and gloves to fit the individual astronaut, and so we just went through that process. Yesterday, uh, Butch was in there getting the water loops cleaned out, making sure the fans work. So every day for the next few weeks, there's different tasks that we're doing in, in terms of getting prepared for it. Um, we have to get the tools all ready. We had to build up some tools for one of the um, greasing lubrication events we're going to do on the robotic arm outside. So there's a lot of preparation that goes into getting ready for the spacewalk. And uh, Butch and I are going to be doing our three spacewalks while Samantha has the most important job of getting us suited up and getting us back in and out of the spacesuits, which is a, a pretty big task in itself. So the three of us will be very busy getting ready for and executing those spacewalks. And have you, have you done a st spacewalk prior, or will this be your first? Yeah, I had the opportunity before to, uh, Terry and Samantha got here in October to go outside, and uh, truly amazing and thrilling. But one thing that I'll have to say is it's about 2%. Uh, oh, my goodness, wow, look at the sights. Look at the... Look at all the beautiful uh, uh, the earth below and about 98% work. It's a lot of work in preparing to go outside. It's a lot of work while you're outside. And, uh, you know, it's five hours in the suit thereabouts before you even open the hatch. Uh, and then you're six, hour, six, six and a half hours outside. And then once you get back in, you've got to clean up the suit. You can't just go straight to bed. There's a lot of work. So it's a long day, a lot involved. Uh, certainly something we look forward to, though. Um, it'll be a good day. Right. And can you describe what it feels like?
Almost impossible to describe. Almost impossible. I, I think the one, the one comment I would make is that just realizing that uh, you and whoever you're going out with, we never go alone, we always go in, in two or more, um, that you're the only people in the universe doing this unique thing and having this opportunity. It's quite, quite humbling, actually, uh, to be able to do it and, uh, and to experience it. It truly is. Um, and if you have if you have a minute, if you could talk a little bit, this is, question is also for everyone. Any uh, experiments you are currently doing aboard the space station? Well, right now the space station is really a very very mi busy microgravity laboratory. Um, the Dragon spacecraft uh, came up uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, it took up a lot of uh, experiments that now we are uh, running. So it happens uh, very often, actually, that Butch, Terry, and I are all working in parallel on like three different experiments, and there's like calm going on on, on space to ground uh, on like three different, completely different topics. Um, I have uh, personally worked on a lot of um, uh, human physiology experiments. Uh, there is one called Drain Brain that studies the uh, return of blood from the head towards the, towards the heart. Uh, there is uh, another one which is called airway monitoring. Uh, Terry and I just did a session last week that studies, uh, for the first time really, in microgravity and in the space environments, what happens to our lungs and to the gas exchange in our lungs when we breathe. Uh, and one that's happening right here, actually, next to where we are now, which is uh, dealing with uh, fruit flies. And it's actually very interesting, a multi-generation um, experiment. So we're actually breeding several generations of fruit flies. And then, you know, some frozen samples of the different generations will go back to Earth on, on Dragon and scientists on the ground can uh, examine them. Uh, and, and something similar I'm actually doing with the Japanese experiments on, on worms. And in that case, we're also actually breeding several generations of those and see how adaptation to space flight actually gets transmitted from one generation to the next. So very exciting science and a lot more, of course, but I don't want, I don't want to take up all the time here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Would you like more uh, science? Because we could certainly go on. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. Actually, if I could turn that camera around, you'd see a pink Columbus module on the other uh, end of the station. And we're growing plants there. And the light that's used for the plant growth is, is pink. So it looks pretty cool, especially at night when you turn all the other lights off. Um, today, my experiment of the day is working on Robonaut. It's a big uh, humanoid type of robot that we have that hopefully eventually will be able to go outside and do some of the spacewalking tasks for us. Um, but right now he just got legs. So today is the, is the big day that he's going to be able to move his legs for the first time. Um, and I've been working on an experiment called CSLM is the acronym. It's a, uh, material science experiment where they melt and mix different metal, uh, alloys and, and look at the process of cooling, uh, the alloys down and, so there's, there's, like Samantha said, there, every day it's a different experiment, and there's lots and lots of it. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Air Force Times portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from the Houston Chronicle. Station, this is the Houston Chronicle. How do you hear me? We've got you loud and clear. How do you hear us? I hear you guys just fine. Thanks so much for making the time today. Uh, there was a lot of excitement this week about the uh, Dragon and CST-100. I know you guys have had a visit from the Dragon up there. Um, how important is it, do you think, for the station to have redundancy and, and the ability to get you guys up and down to space? Well, it's absolutely critical. Without uh, a vehicle to get here, obviously the space station would would uh, would be in pretty bad shape. Uh, thankfully for us, we all came here on the Soyuz, which was a great ride. Uh, it was fun, and it's a very reliable and good spacecraft. But it's going to be really good to have a spaceship launching from Florida, from America again. And Boeing and SpaceX are the two contractors who won that contract. And as you know, there was a press conference just the other day with our administrator and, and many others. And so there's uh, definitely a big effort and focus from NASA right now uh, to get uh, a capability to launch humans uh, from Florida, from America, uh, on, on the NASA spacecraft with Boeing and SpaceX. And we'll also be coming on the Soyuz also. So in the future, we'll actually have three different ways to get here. So that redundancy is an important part of it also. I see. 
Uh, Samantha, my daughter wanted me, uh, my seven-year-old daughter wanted me to ask you a question. Um, she was wondering if it was scary in space. Uh, Terry has something to say about that. Well, if you had to live with me and Butch, yes, it's very scary in space. Every, every morning she has to look at us. <clears throat> Jokes apart. No, I, uh, I don't think it's scary. Um, I enjoy a lot being up here. Uh, it's very interesting and challenging work. Uh, it's a great working environment. It's a great living environment. It's a privilege to be up here, and, and it's also a lot of fun. So um, I hope that your daughter, on the contrary, will maybe try and get to space herself one day. I think she'd like to go to Mars one day, so we'll we'll see about that. Um, obviously, the other big news down here this week is is everyone's getting excited for the Super Bowl, and I know there's a couple of football fans up there. Do you guys have plans to watch the game? Are you going to be able to watch it live? Uh, will you have traditional Super Bowl snacks, or, or how are you going to, to, to watch the game? Yeah, regrettably, uh, our uh, bedtime, or at least my bedtime, is uh, quite early, and uh, the, the game actually comes on in the middle of the night. But I am an early riser, so I think that uh, I get up usually around 4.30, so I think I might be able to watch the end of it. Uh, I don't know about these guys here. I'll let them speak for themselves. But I look forward to at least watching the end and, and seeing, how, seeing the outcome. And, and I might throw something on the grill just for myself as well. <laughs> Uh, Terry, a, a few days ago, you tweeted a picture of yourself, I guess, in a, in a J.J. Watt shirt, uh, greatest football player on earth. I think, you know, we can all agree about that in Houston. Uh, is Butch the greatest football player in, uh, in space, given his uh, experience at Tennessee Tech? I, I think that's probably safe to say, yeah. <laughs> Ms. Butch here, uh, he, had his, he was a college football player in, in, uh, in space, and it's... <laughs> Samantha is the greatest European football player, like in soccer, as we call it. But yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we enjoy that. And, and whenever we do a PR with different events, we, we always get a football out and use that to demonstrate the zero gravity, you know, floating. Have you guys but I'm sure it's not only in Houston. I think most people can agree that J.J. Watt is the greatest football player, not only on Earth, but probably in the whole universe. <laughs> Um, so in a, in a few months, uh, Scott Kelly is going to launch the space station for a, for a one-year mission. Uh, Butch has been up there for, for a couple months longer than, than Terry and, and Samantha, but you all been up there a few months. Um, how much do each of you think that a one-year mission, how, how much of a challenge is that going to be, you know, from a health standpoint, from a mental health standpoint, uh, for, for Scott? You know, I don't, I don't foresee uh, anything from a health standpoint necessarily. You know, S S Scott's kind of a gym rat. He likes getting in and working out and doing those type of things, and it's an absolute necessity up here um, to keep yourself physically fit, um, to prepare yourself for the return back to Earth, and I think uh, Scott will do that and, and take care of that without issue. I think one of the things that, that is difficult is it is, uh, it is concentration all day, every day. It's uh, so much at stake up here, so many... Uh, science projects, so many experiments, so many everything that people put a lot of effort into for literally for decades. And to be in charge of that, have those things in your hands, you, you want to make sure you get it right. So it's a lot of concentration. And over the long haul, that, that can wear on you. So I think that's one thing that, that uh, they are aware of. They got some plans in to give a couple extra days off as the time goes on. And I think that's probably really smart. He mentioned that, you know, after about four months, he was ready to come home the last time. Uh, have you reached that point, Butch, where you're kind of ready to come home, that, that four months is about right? Or are you still enjoying yourself and, and wish you could stay up there a lot longer? I will answer that truthfully. <laughs> I am not ready to come home. Um, I would love to pipe my family up here and share some time with them, but I, I don't have the four-month doldrums at all. Um, I'm enjoying myself. They've kept us busy interacting with the ground. The different control centers around the globe has been fun. We've tried to make it fun, have some laughs, have, have some good times. We kind of keep it light up here as well, and it's really an enjoyable place in such a unique environment. Um, four months is not uh, too long or long enough. I think six may be about right. We'll see. I'll let you know in a couple of months. But right now, I'm, I'm energetic and having a good time. 
Well, well I'm glad to hear that. Uh, so Terry and Samantha have both been sending back some, some great pictures uh, from the planet. Obviously, you know, you, you guys have been very excited about what you've seen. I'm, I'm interested sort of from each of you what the coolest thing uh, you've seen in space in the time you've been up there so far. That's really hard question to answer because there's so many cool things. It's hard to rank one above the other. Um, I guess for me, one thing, the sunrises and sunsets is probably my favorite, but what, the one picture that stands out is early in the mission, uh, we were flying over northern Europe at night when there were some aurora, and uh, I got a, some some pretty amazing shots of England and France and Ireland with aurora in the distance, and there was one night there was a big storm there, so you could see lightning going off. So that that's one out of many things that stands out to me. Uh, from my point of view, I mean, what, what, I, what really always triggers a special emotion for me is when we fly over, um, over Europe. But from a special perspective, I really enjoy those passes where we kind of fly over Gibraltar and onto the Mediterranean. There, there is something um, that has a special emotional connection. I think it's all the history that I relate to and, and the culture. and the, I don't know, it, it always resonates with me a lot. From a visual point of view, um, I guess I will just throw out the, the last thing that really impressed me that I saw yesterday, actually two of them. One was last week. For the first time I, have, I had like two, uh, I had some night passes um, over, I guess, the Thailand area. And, uh, and those like parts of the sea were like totally full of very, very bright green dots that I understand are fishing boats. And that was just so impressive. I mean, so many of them and so bright. It was an incredible sight. And that's something I saw just yesterday for the first time, which was like a, an aurora. And we've seen auroras multiple times. But this one was like um, the, the blue the, the blue stripe, the really bright blue stripes that comes up on the earth limb when the sun rises, it kind of, you know, it kind of touched the aurora. So I had this incredible blue turning over into this incredible green of the aurora, and I had never seen that. So it was really amazing to see that. Without question, I mean, like they said, look, the views out the window are magnificent. There's, there's no way you could pick one, at least I can't, over the other. But without question, the memory I think I will take back is when Terry and Samantha arrived. I've been here two months, and when they came in, the looks on their faces, and watching Samantha, who's a first-time flyer, finally get to a window that she could see down towards the earth and watch her expression and the things that she's trying to describe I saw take place was just thrilling to watch. It was truly amazing. It was neat. That's very cool. So, so I'll add one more thing. Last night we had a chance to... Just real quick, last time we had a chance to fly over uh, the east coast of the U.S., which was a beautiful pass. I got some great shots of it, but it was the, the blizzard. So you could see Atlanta, D.C., Baltimore, New York, and then you, it was getting cloudier and cloudier, and you could see a hurricane there. It looks, it looks like a hurricane just off the coast of Boston. That was, that was pretty amazing to know how many people down there in America are being affected and then to be able to see it in the moonlight because the, whenever the moon shines, you can see clouds, uh, not like daytime, but, but you can definitely see them. That was, that was pretty cool. Sorry, go ahead. No problem. We're running out of time, so just just a final quick question. Uh, maybe maybe one of y'all could describe the condition of the the station. It's been up there now. It'll be 15 years inhabited um, later this year, and and you know it's got a lifetime of 2024, maybe 2028. How would you describe it? Is it a well-worn house? Is it a is it a, has it have the new car feel? Is it you know a, a clunker? How would you characterize it? Well, the station, I think, overall is in great shape. It's it's in amazingly good shape for as long as it's been here. You, module by module, it's it's different as far as the age and and how new it is. Here in the Japanese module, this it's like a new car in here. Everything looks uh, brand new and it's really kept up well. Node one is kind of our eating area. It was the very first American module that got launched, so um, that is definitely has a used car feel, not a new car feel. Uh, the American segment modules are different than the Russian segment mod modules, but overall on both segments. Um, I, personally, I think it's in great shape. It requires a lot of effort. We have to constantly clean it and you know, make sure we keep it in good shape because like with time, like anything, it's, it would get worn out. But we spend a lot of time cleaning it and we get a lot of spare parts that we can replace things with and uh, it's in great shape. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.